Here we're going to be looking at consolidated earnings per share here. We're going to be looking at formulas and a few calculations. So starting with the basic earnings per share. And for our subsidiary here, their basic earnings per share, their formula would be the adjusted net income minus the preferred stock dividends here of the subsidiary. Now the adjusted net income, that comes off the income distribution schedule for the consolidation. And then we would be dividing that here by the subsidiary's weighted average of common shares outstanding. So that's for the subsidiary's basic earnings per share formula. Now let's go down and look at the consolidated basic earnings per share formula. So we would start here with the parent's adjusted internally generated net income and then we would subtract here the parent preferred stock dividend. Now we go and we would add the quantity here uh, where the parents own subsidiary common shares times the subsidiary's basic earnings per share uh, per share here. And remember we got that from we'd have to calculate that here from the formula that we looked at here for the subsidiary's basic earnings per share. So we have that quantity here. Now we would be adding another quantity here and that would be the parents own subsidiary preferred shares times the subsidiary's preferred dividends per share. So we've got this quantity that we have to multiply out here and add plus we had this other quantity here that we had to multiply it in, out and add to our uh, a for our consolidated basic earnings per share. And then we would take this quantity up here and we'd be dividing it here by the parents weighted common shares outstanding here. So that would be our calculation here or our formula here for the consolidated, consolidated basic earnings per share. Now let's look at the basic model or formula here for computing the consolidated diluted earnings per share. So looking at our consolidated diluting earnings per share formula, we would start out here with the parents adjusted internally generated net income and then we'd be adding here the parents diluted earnings per share for income adjustments and then we'd be adding this quantity here where the parents owned equivalent shares of the subsidiary times the subsidiary's diluted earnings per share. So this quantity here we'd be adding for, for our diluting earnings per share. And then we'd be dividing it here by the parent's common shares outstanding plus the parent's diluted earnings per share share adjustments here. And that would be our basic formula here. Now we could, uh, we have one other option here that we have to consider. If, if we have diluted subsidiary securities that enable the holder to acquire parent stock, that would have to be included here in the dil parent's diluted earnings per share. And we would be having the same formula as that we went up, had up above here with this other exception here. We would, we'd have to add on any income adjustment for the subsidiary securities that would enable the holder to acquire the parent stock. So this would be up in the numerator here and we'd have to add that into our uh, consolidated earnings per share formula. Now let's apply this uh, formula here for the subsidiary's basic earnings per share and we're going to just apply it through a calculation here. We're going to have to determine the subsidiary's diluted earnings per share. Now really what I'm doing here is just going through some numbers here. Uh, you'd have to be very familiar with uh, all the uh, dilutions and earnings per share and warrants and preferred stocks and that to actually use these formulas here. So you'd have to, so let's just go through some numbers here. So uh, subsidiaries diluted earnings per share, we uh, start with our adjusted net income, say it was 44,000 and then we'd subtract out a preferred stock dividends here of 4,000 and then we would add in here some interest paid on some convertible bonds for $6,000 and then we'd be dividing that by the common shares outstanding here of $10,000 and then we'd also add uh, uh, convertible bonds here that we'd have. We had 400 convertible bonds times 10 shares per bond. That gives us 4,000 shares here. And then we also had some warrants here to purchase stock here, uh, $1,000. So we'd add up all these uh, stock uh, amounts here of 10,000, 4,000, 1,000 and divide them into our numerator amount up here and we'd get $3.07 per share here. That would be the uh, subsidiary's diluted earnings per share. Okay, now continuing on with our example here. We just got 
finished here uh, calculating the cons uh, the subsidiaries diluted earnings per share here at three dollars and seven cents per share and we're going to be using this number here and showing how to plug it into our formula here so the first thing we have to do is we have to kind of calculate the parents own subsidiary stock or stock equivalents that's what the parent would own for the subsidiary or the stock equivalents and all I'm going to go through here is a, a basic example so what you'd be looking for here when you have to make this calculation so we have the subsidiaries common shares owned by the parent in this case the parent was an 80 percent owner and there were 10,000 shares here by the subsidiary and that would give us 8,000 shares here and then the parents owned equivalent shares applied to convertible bonds here of the subsidiary and that we just got a quantity we're going to use here of 3600 and then the parents owned equivalent shares applicable to warrants here and we're going to just use a quantity of 500 here so what we would do is we'd be to totaling up all these uh, subsidiary apparent owned subsidiary stocks and stock equivalents here and then we'd come up with a total amount here the total parent owned equivalent shares here in this case it was 12,100 shares now from that we would uh, calculate here the parents interest in the subsidiaries income that was the 12,100 shares here times the three dollars and seven cents here of the subsidiaries diluted earnings per share that we have up here that's why we calculated that so we got a total amount here of thirty seven thousand one hundred and fifty dollars here now that's the parents interests in the subsidiaries income here thirty one thousand one hundred fifty dollars so let's go down to our consolidated diluted earnings per share formula here so we would start out here with 80,000 here. Now that was the parents adjusted internally generated net income here of 80,000. And then we would add uh, 10,000 here and that was the parents diluted earnings per share income adjustments here for convertible bond interest. I'm just using that as an example. And then we come up with this um, amount that we calculated up here this formula here where we have the parents owned equivalent shares that we calculated to be one thousand or twelve thousand one hundred dollars here times the subsidiaries diluted earnings per share here and that was three dollars and seven cents that we had calculated so we have this quantity here parents owned equivalent shares times the subsidiaries diluted earnings per share and we go down to our formula here and that was thirty seven one hundred and fifty dollars so we'd put that into our formula here so we'd be adding the eighty thousand plus the ten thousand plus the thirty seven thousand one fifty and then we would have to divide that here by I'm just using these as numbers here uh, the parents common shares outstanding in this case it was twenty thousand we're using here and then we'd have to also add here to parents diluted earnings per share adjustments for shares issued for, in this case for convertible bonds I'm just using that as an example so that would be three thousand here so we'd be adding these uh, this uh, common shares outstanding here for 20,000 plus the 3,000 here for the share adjustments and we'd be dividing that into the uh, numerator amount here that we calculated and that would give us four dollars and 89 cents per share here and that would be the consolidated diluted earnings per share here so what I've done here is I've just went through this formula here just to plug in some numbers but the point I want to go back to is here that is this amount here where the parents owned equivalent shares times the subsidiaries diluted earnings per share this amount here and that we get off our calculation up here where we have to determine the parents own subsidiary stock or stock equivalents which we had done here and we also have to use the diluted earnings per share here of the subsidiary that we calculated so this is what I'm looking at here this how you would use this these two amounts here or to calculate it here and plug it into our consolidated diluted earnings per share formula.